Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So on the weekend I put my nose to a new fragrance which really excited me so I couldn't wait to get in here and share it with you. Uh, it's a new perfume by uh, French ceramics maker Astia de Villat. Uh, they appeared around two, the early 2000s um, creating a black ceramic which is glazed with a white glaze. You kind of have a few examples of them here. They're wonderful and their whole idea and sort of ideology, I suppose, is about creating ceramics which um, form trumps function. So while some of these pieces are not very functional, they're aesthetically beautiful. And many of them kind of um, harken back to antiques and old quirky pieces. For example, you might find a vase which is in the shape of a foot wearing a sandal or a lidded jar um, like a lion's head or something like that. So. Certainly worth checking out. I'll put the link in the comment section below. Astia de Villat, shall I say, started creating fragrances around 2008, and that was in collaboration with some very well-known perfumers such as um, Emilie Massad and Françoise Caron. Françoise Caron, of course, was one of the women who um, reformulated Eau d'Angevin at some point, so I'm raising the flag for Françoise. Love you, girl. Um, anyway, the latest fragrance is in fact called Tucson. So as the name might suggest, this one really uh, pays homage to the Arizona desert. Now we've seen the desert theme emerge in previous, um, I guess, perfume explorations from different perfumers. And the one that comes to mind straight away is L'Air du Désert Marocain by uh, Andy Tower, Moroccan Desert Air. That one I was introduced to probably 2008-ish or 2007, love it to bits. And it really pioneered a whole new direction for me into that parched, arid, incense kind of style scent. And that's in fact a category that I adore. So the moment I put my nose to Tucson, I was swept up and uh, bought a bowl. So Tucson's wonderful. It's actually got uh, unusual notes. There's straw flower. Now, if you're not familiar with the name, you're probably familiar with the flower. They are those very papery, almost crepe or greaseproof papery type flowers. Um, there's many colours, yellows and pinks and whites and things like that, but they're kind of crispy when you touch them with your hand. Um, you might think that they don't actually have a scent, but when you really study a few of them, if you hold them to your nose, they have quite a spicy, almost smoky profile. And that definitely comes through in here. Um, other notes also include thyme. Uh, thyme's a great green uh, aspect, but it's quite a dry green, it's a husky green, um, and it almost feels animalic in some ways. There's birch, which lends a wonderful smokiness to everything. I've uh, mentioned in previous videos my love of birch and fragrances such as um, Santa Maria Novella's Bo de España and also Gyalan Cui de Uh It also has amber and labdanum. So the labdanum in here really gives it that fantastic. Um, almost fruity uh, incense kind of feel again. I've never been to Tucson, I've never been to the Arizona desert, but for all intents and purposes, I think it really ticks those boxes. It really speaks of warmth, aridness, um, that parched landscape. But let's not forget too, you know, that landscape is dotted with cacti and, um, you know, the agave plant is in abundance. They make tequila from it, they make mezcal from it. Um, and Mezcal's got a slightly smokier profile than most tequilas, so um, I think it really does pay homage to that part of the world. Tucson's a great one. Uh, had I found this a few weeks ago before I did my incense spectrum, it probably would have definitely taken up residence in that, um, that kind of diagram from light to heavy. This one sits in the, I guess, mid to heavy part of that spectrum. If you're a fan of L'Air du Desert Marocain, or if you're a fan of incense fragrances in general, anything with that lovely, um, you know, dry mouth, oppressive heat kind of warm style fragrance, then Tucson is going to really interest you. Uh, if you can obviously find it through the Asti de Velate website, but if not, um, I'm sure it's rolled out to, you know, fragrance um, distributors such as uh, Lucky Scent and a few others. So definitely have a look around. I'm fortunate to have found this here in Perth, Western Australia at Dilettante in Claremont, where they have the full Astia de Villat line. So 
Thank you. Let me know if you've got a favourite desert style fragrance or a favourite Astia de Villat, Astia de Villat fragrance. I still struggle with the French. I'm not a native speaker. Um, don't be so judgy. <laughs> um, anyway, leave a comment below and um, share this or hit subscribe and you'll be up. Uh, you'll be advised when I upload new material. Thank you again for joining me and we'll talk again soon.